Final Fantasy XI was beloved for its complexity, but because of that, guides were always desired, and none better than the Brady Games Guide. As most of you probably well know, the Brady Games Guide was not perfect, so we're jumping into the barred job description today to understand how Brady Games thought we should pick sub-jobs, tune the job to our specific needs, how it should be played from Brady Games Guide perspective of 2004. It's gonna be great! The last job we did, honestly, wasn't even that wrong. There were like a few call outs where it's like, okay, that was kind of a dumb way to say that, but otherwise you're pretty much right. So let's hope that they got Bard much worse. As many of you may remember, Bard was one of the most beloved jobs uh, that existed in Final Fantasy XI, one of the best support jobs in the game. Every party was better for having a Bard. And uh, I'm hoping that Brady Games recognize that. Let's start off. Uh, like white mages, Bards aren't meant to act on their own. These party support characters are intended to reduce downtime and keep groups in a full and active state for long periods of time. This is accomplished with music and instruments. As a main job, bards can keep two songs effects going within a given radius. Whether a party leans toward magic use or melee, bards have the option of supporting whatever is needed by providing increased magic regeneration, combat skills, and more. That is true, although I feel like they don't really lean on the, the fact that bards are more useful not even just for downtime and keeping the party going, but for like truly increasing speed of kill like the amount that you can improve the attack power accuracy haste of of a melee party to provide more consistent deliverable skill chains and magic bursts was a critical aspect of why bard was so amazing not just for like you know the the stability that they provided for keeping a party on more of an even kill uh, but yeah otherwise i mean an accurate description like if you're, if you're gonna quickly summarize in a paragraph what Bard does, yeah, it, it's fine, it's good, okay? Brady Games starting off well. Uh, then they go into the Bard's starting attributes for various various races. Let's see, uh, charisma being the most important, I always forget Hume, Elvon, and Tartar all share a starting charisma of seven versus Mithra and Galka, which start at six. I would love to see how that improves over time to see who has the best charisma. Plane is flying by. No, seriously, I have no idea who is the best charisma. I feel like one of, this is one of the the few jobs that uh, Hume actually has a huge benefit towards the the end game um, in terms of the two most critical stats, which are, in my opinion, hit points and charisma as a balance. I, I don't remember how Elvon's charisma rose or not. They might be pretty amazing, too. Who knows? Let me know, guys. Anyways, bard race choices. Bards are a wonderfully flexible job because they can be used by anyone. With a principal attribute of charisma, many races fall easily into being bards. The rest have useful abilities that provide bards with versatility and freedom. Galka contribute hit points and longevity to the bard job. They can take more damage and get closer to the action, and Galka are definitely intimidating to monsters. That last part is just like a nice little bit of flavor. I love the idea that a bard up front, his huge bulky <laughs> Galka bard is like, <laughs> you don't want to mess with this. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the most interesting aspect of playing a Galka bard is the sight of one singing their carefree songs, so it odds with how most people perceive this solid Galka. Elvon have a nice charisma and good hit points, allowing them to have powerful songs and survive nearly anything. Elvon bards are just fun to play and offer a wide range of support job. I don't feel like I saw many Elvon bards, but they might be one of the better options. I wonder if that's just because of the kind of the kind of player that an Elvon kind of draws with its high strength. It, it, it's often like these big damaging jobs, and then it's rare that those kind of uh, player mindsets would shift to like being the total support role. Let me know if you were an Elvon bard. I'd love to know. Mithra bards are just fast and can dodge incoming enemy attacks. Although their charisma may not be as high, Mithra have other distinct advantages. Because Mithra are so well-rounded in other attributes, they more than make up for things with their hit points, evasion, and ability to take other useful support jobs. That last part continues to show that Brady Games really doesn't understand the concept of the support job and how flexible or inflexible it really is. But otherwise, I mean, yeah, it's kind of a funny joke that like Mithra can dodge more attacks than any other race. Yeah, they do have higher agility. Although this chart makes that not seem to be the case. I mean, it's like six, but Tartar are also, also six. I know that it grows faster though. 
Hume bards are a natural combination because they have wonderful charisma and versatility. They gravitate towards this job. The combination of high charisma, decent hit points, and the flexibility and support jobs makes the human ideal choice when choosing the bar profession. I agree. I think this is one of the jobs that like really benefits just from having that well-roundedness that a Hume provides. But of all the jobs that like any race can truly achieve, I think Bard is it. I think they nailed it up above. Tartar also have very nice charisma. They are perfect when combining Bard with other mage classes as well. And a Bard Red Mage is a wonderful support character who can do a lot of everything. Their high agility also keeps them away from enemy attacks, giving their Bard survivability as well. I mean, talk about the least survivable Bard though. <laughs> like, uh, the high agility is nowhere near enough to combat the low HP of the Tartar. My favorite, you know, race of all time. Long live the Tar Tar, but I don't know if I'd say like they're a super survivable bard. Incredibly dangerous. Then we get some job traits, job abilities. Job traits are resist silence, uh, apparently four times across the 75 levels, and soul voice. I, I think we've got more abilities and traits at this point, but back when this was out, that was probably it. The two hour was all you got. And then like two straight pages of just songs most of which you will never cast. A lot of them are useful though, I will say. As much as I give Bard a lot of crap for having like a bunch of songs that aren't really super useful. The plane returns, it's coming, it's coming back around. All the Threnodies are useful. The Carols have moments. The Requiems continue to grow in, in effectiveness and then Minuet, Min, the Etudes. I don't know, there are a lot that you're just like, really? When when did anyone cast that? Funny. Shining Fantasia enhances resistance against blindness for party members within range. Tell me if you've ever cast that particular bard spell. I'd love to know. Bard Extra Job Quest. So this goes into the details of how to become a bard. At the Merry Minstrel Mead House in Lower Juno, talk to Mayor Tyre. Oh yeah, I forgot about that guy. He's like the bard dude. Yeah, the most interesting thing that this kind of goes into is that the bard quest never actually shows up in your, like, quest log. So it, if you didn't know it was a quest, you'd have no idea that you were doing anything. And then they're just like, congrats, you're a bard. And you're like, well, was, was, I on a, was I on a quest? Who knew? It is kind of unique. It's a nice little, like, bit of Final Fantasy XI flavor that they added. I wonder, that must have been kind of complicated for them to create a quest in-game that wouldn't show up in the, the quest log. I mean, maybe not. Maybe they were... It was a super easy thing to do, but I like that they did it. Kind of, it gives the job a little bit less of like, you're trained to become something, and it's just like, yeah, you, you've got the heart and soul of a bard, and you're gonna sing songs and play beautiful music to keep the party going. Playing as a bard. Having a full bard in the party changed the dynamic of a group very quickly. Bards aren't intended to solo in any way, so their use is almost completely directed toward a party environment. Bards can keep two effects going for a group at the same time. They stay at full effectiveness by alternating between two desired effects that are needed for the party to function at its best. Attack and accuracy during a melee brawl, mind and HP or MP during resting, etc. With higher levels, bards gain access to a wider array of songs, making them even better at customizing their enhanced spells. So, oh wait, let me read this next part I was about to criticize. Because these songs have an area effect, it's possible to use the natural distance between melee and ranged members of the party to apply different songs to different people. You lose melee enhancing songs in the forward elements of your group, and then retreat to aid the magical damage or regeneration of magic with the casters, or add agility to rangers, etc. I was gonna say, by saying that they can only keep two songs up, it's kind of mitigating the whole concept of how Bard can truly enhance a party and shape how they like strategically set themselves up physically in a space to better make use of you ultimately like four bard songs at once, but they do bring that up immediately. Bards are always on the move because of these elements. As a weak damage dealer, the bard is rarely expected to engage monsters the entire time, or at all. I'm shocked that they even say engage. A bard's work is accomplished through others. If you keep a group from needing downtime, they will gain more XP than they possibly could by adding just one more member. Bards are wonderful at support. That is something that truly was always fascinating about bards <clears throat> in uh, Final Fantasy XI. They were entirely support. You could do summon feebles uh, that were that could be critical. You could do very, very little damage with like Faux Requiem, more like a, uh, I would put that even more in the enfeebling category. Point being, they are truly more valuable than another player that is dealing damage. That is how strong the support uh, element is. And I think that's, that's tough to balance in some games, but they nailed it in Final Fantasy XI. How long to solo? 
In this case, it's not how long to solo, but how long not to solo. As noted earlier, bards don't need to search on their own. As an extra job with the potential to make friends quickly, it's best to find buddies for new leveling early on. Get a support job as a warrior or something simple while trying to attain level 7 or 8, then start looking for others. Make your own group if needed. Bards certainly have the clout to organize parties of their own. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a bard having to form their own party? Has anyone here been a bard who formed their own party? To be honest, we sort of did this when I was leveling bard in uh, on Eden in in on our Twitch streams because like I was having trouble getting parties because support is so popular in the private server experience. I think it's the same reason that I jumped on bard initially in Eden. Everyone remembers how tough it was leveling a melee jo job damage dealer, <laughs> a black mage, a, a summoner. And they're like, this time when I go back, I'm gonna level bard and get parties immediately. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, I do think there's more bards now than there probably were back in the day. I don't know if that's still the case, but when I was trying to level bard, that seemed to be what was going on. Speaking of which guys, if you didn't know, uh, we do stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Mind. Uh, definitely stop by to say hi and, and check it out. We do play a lot of Final Fantasy XI. We've been streaming uh, some other stuff lately, but we do hop in and level on Eden and retail every once in a while. So definitely come by, join in. We're trying to organize more game group nights. Uh, I'm terrible at this, but we're getting going. We're going to do it. Uh, but let me know if you've ever formed a, a party as a bard. I feel like if you show up for like two seconds with your seek up, even if you don't have to seek up, they're like, hi, you're a bard. Please join us. Without a party, leveling won't occur very fast. Even the attack and enfeebling songs gained along the way won't make it easy to obliterate powerful enemies. At an early stage, it's unlikely that a bard will have the armor or hit points to stand up to much aggression. All true. So far, they're pretty much nailing bard with way more accuracy than I think is fair. I wonder if somebody from the Brady Games Guide, like, they leveled bard. A lot of these jobs, they just, like, talk to people. They're like, what do you think about summer? And somebody's like, I've never leveled it, but here's my advice. But like Bard was like, here, we're gonna level fast. I'm going to be a Bard. Yummy targets. While in a group, look for specific targets that are advantageous. Like Ninja, Bards can use elemental powers to increase a beast's weakness during a certain type of magic. With the right mix of jobs to exploit that aspect, throw in an elemental song to hamper the party's foes. At high level, when more attention goes into keeping the party on its feet, this won't be as critical as it is during early leveling. I mean, that's an interesting advice. It's not like bad advice. If you like find something that's super weak to I don't know, water damage, and you increase that, and then do distortion skill chains with, with a black mage magic bursting water. Like, yeah, that that's an incredible collection of things you've added with the bard to make this incredibly effective flow of damage. But I feel like it undermines the overall effort. But I don't know if that makes them, like, particularly strong against one. Bards are amazing because they're useful in almost every scenario in original Final Fantasy XI classic experience. I would say the opposite is easier. Uh, despite what they were saying, being a bard against targets that do a lot of AoEs can be annoying because you like have to run in there and you get hit. And if nothing else, you're kind of draining the white mage's MP as they try to keep you up from these like dumb hits. Uh, it can just be bad luck if you like run into your songs and it's like, right when I was there, damn it. But yeah, the less AoEs, the better. Do I need an instrument? You sure do if you want to play multiple songs without an instrument your bard can't create multiple effects in an area that is the reason bard is seldom chosen as a support role as bards can't use their instruments unless it's their main job is that true is that tied to the instrument i always like grab a bunch of instruments at level one no matter what so i kind of can't remember not using one but is that the reason i thought it was just like tied to the fact that bard being a main job could play more songs it's kind of cool that it's like technically tied to the fact that you can Equip an instrument, that's a nice little unique piece of flavor. Weapon skills. For the most part, it doesn't matter whether you're carrying a weapon or a feather duster. Bards are so busy most of the time that you don't get a chance to engage monsters. Spare hits are nice, but bards can accomplish much more by varying their songs. Uh, still true, I mean, damn, Brady Games got it. They get bard, they totally get it. Being in a party. Much like white mage, bards are so useful at supporting a party's efforts that they are highly sought after. Powerful parties will make considerable efforts to have a bard around as part of their mix. That's true. They will kick other people. Uh, they will burn friendships. They will leave players behind to get a good bard. A party leader may ask a bard to focus more on one thing or another, and it's usually fine to work along those lines while you see how the party functions. Depending on the tactics being used, there may be increased value to songs that you don't use as often in generic parties. Rare. But true, there could be scenarios where you suddenly have a song that you need that you've never used before. 
Song combinations. Melee, sword magical for accuracy and advancing march for attack speed. Look at this like detailed list that they're providing. They are giving so much detail on how to effectively play Bard. Support melee, sword magical for accuracy and mage's ballad for magic point regeneration. Oh, interesting. So I'm assuming they're thinking like, what well, blue mage isn't in this, but uh, dark knight, paladin. Which is true. It was always fun to try and get like Paladin on the mage side of the battle and like sneak a ballad just to them. And then a Dark Knight, like every few fights could run over there too and grab one. Full casters. Mage is bound for magic point regeneration and either spirited attitude for mine or learned attitude for intelligence. Also incredibly accurate. Dude, Brady Games is giving, <laughs> like I could g walk into Final Fantasy level with no knowledge and be like, guys, I may not be ready for much, but I can be a bard. During rest, mages ballad for magic and armies pay on for health. Also true. Equipping items. A bard's equipment is different from the norm. Find a good instrument first, then look for anything that raises a bard's attributes in a useful way. After charisma, look for some vitality to assist with area of effect attacks while your character passes through the front lines. And agility is mostly a lost cause, even as a Tartar or Mithra. See, it's funny that they say that. After saying how evasive Tartar and Mithra were as like the racial options that you could pick, but they acknowledge with the item equipment choices that they're like, eh, it doesn't matter. No matter how much agility you offer, it's not going to like make you this evasive bard that can survive anything. But yeah, I mean, otherwise, good advice. Go for charisma first, vitality. I mean, they didn't really mention that you can like get HP equipment specifically or MP equipment. But yeah, I'll be curious to see what they say about support jobs because they mentioned warrior earlier. And I want to see if they just lean into the full support of like white mage sub. Bard is a main job. Bobs are, bards are absolutely wonderful as a main job. Parties will love you, XP will roll in, and levels will accumulate with fair speed. In a position of party assistance, look for support jobs that will further increase what you can do for allies. Bard White Mage. This is one of the most common bard choices. As a tar, tar in this field, you will have just enough magic points to get by, and you can further decrease party downtime by doing backup healing when the primary healer needs some rest. Nailed it. But this is... This is the one. This is the quote that I used to make fun of Brady Games for all the time. This this is the moment, guys. Bard Thief. Not usually as powerful for a party support role, this combo still adds treasure to the group's coffers. A person looking for a break from the standard mold should consider this option. What mold? We are breaking all sorts of... <laughs> I, just, I always used to laugh. This combo still adds treasure to the group's coffers. I mean... I used to give this a lot of crap. I guess that's technically true. You will have the treasure hunter trait, the the first one at least. I mean, sure. It just would never outweigh the necessity of a white mage sub or ninja sub, which isn't even referenced. Just kind of funny. Oh, Brady Games, I love you. You almost nailed it. Bard is a support job. The bard profession is almost crippled as a support job. Do the instrument limitations groups can't even acquire even half of your character's true potential to assist with their leveling. When used as a solo or like a Beastmaster Bard, it still lacks some of the refined abilities that a person can gain by taking another job. I'm shocked. Beyond their little moment as Bard Thief, which wasn't even wrong, it just sort of like misses the point. Brady Games nailed it. I, I am like astounded. Guys, let me know what you think of the Brady Games Guide in general, and specifically Bard. I mean, like I said, I used to think of this, it's always what I thought about. I was like, remember when they said that Bard Thief was like a great combination? But to be honest, the Bard instructional pages are some of the best that I've seen in this guide. They truly seem to get it. They get its strengths and weaknesses. They make a couple little like flavor text enhancements that probably aren't necessary specifically about the race choices, but otherwise they really got it. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on Tuesdays and Thursdays on the Twitch stream if you stop by. And uh, definitely look out for more videos like this one. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. The blue. Blue killed Ballista. Fight me. I mean, even if you're right, you might be right. Can you imagine if... Uh... Actually, I'd be curious. Do you think any Square Enix conversations behind the scenes ever started with the sentence, this is going to severely imbalance Ballista? Do you think they ever made any decisions based on that? I'd be fascinated to know.